that. Food. We can all agree we love it. I haven't met a single person that doesn't like food. How many of you guys like food? Yeah. I love food too. I also love talking. Now, how many of you guys like wasting food? Not as many. According to ND, NRDC, 40% of the food that we produce is wasted. It's terrible. There are little adjustments we can make in our life, but we're not. And it's something we need to change for the future generations. Just being able to be more aware, clean your meals, and compost are the easiest and most effective ways to stop creating the waste. If you really want to change the world, this is your place to start. So I thought, how could I change my way and your guys' perspective on how we change ways at SOAR. Then I remembered my first sleepaway camp idea and how they change ways. It was called Camp Boggy Creek, made in Florida. We would make plywood-shaped pigs, painted pigs, and connect them to a bucket. After meals, we would put the wasted food into the buckets and see how much of a pig we were being. <laughs> so, I want to take their idea to North Carolina and hopefully inspire others in my school to do the same. The idea of changing food waste is a big thing and we can't change it overnight. So I want them to feed the pigs our scraps. Now it's one way to feed, another way to feed animals our food waste by not creating more and giving them something. But as it turns out, Current North Carolina law states that all food fed to pigs must be heat treated or pasteurized within 24 hours of arrival to the farm. You also need a permit from the state veterinarian to feed the food to the livestock. This really stunned me because I loved pigs and I was so pumped about a project that I could use with one of my favorite animals and help in the world. So I had to think for a better way for the Academy at SOAR to still reduce the waste. Here at the Academy at SOAR, we are splitting four teams. All two teams are on campus, the other two are in the field and on expedition. So the teams that are, so the teams on campus, we were trapped with food waste. So we decided that we would separate the food into the team's bins and the food that was wasted and weighed at the end of each meal. It turned out to be much better because this is something you could do at home for a week and it doesn't have much, and see how much waste you make and you can change it. So I want you guys to think about this. Here's your real life perspective. How would you feel if you got home from the grocery store, you bought a carton of eggs, and you just dropped them? You'd feel sad, right? You just wasted them. But if you got them home and you put them in the fridge, and you just let them sit there and didn't use them, how would you feel? A lot less remorse. When we put stuff in different ways, even though we're still doing the same thing, it's something that we don't think about. Our fridges have grown in by 15% since the 1970s, according to the Appliance Standards Awareness Project. And the average dinner plate has grown in size by 36% since 1960, according to Wensing and Van Intersum. When we have a big dinner plate, we usually fill it up even if we can't eat it all. And that's what we're doing with our fridge as well. Our eyes are much bigger than our stomach. And another problem is the expiration dates on our food. Expiration dates make up a huge amount of wasted food. Over 90% of Americans store away their food prematurely, according to Time Magazine. The problem is that people think that the dates are when the food is bad, but it's actually the manufacturer's best guess when the food will be the best or the freshest. So, when you see stores tossing the like, grocery carts of food, they have concern for their customers. But it's a fake fear. And it's the same with grocery stores. The ugly food doesn't make it. They want the perfect, prettiest, and best looking food. They worry if it has a deformity, people won't want it. Or if there's not a lot of it, and there's only a couple of it left, we worry that the last option is the worst option. Or places like Walmart, or Target, Angels, or Publix, wherever you shop. The USDA has certain requirements for each food. For a banana, they have to have the right curvature, length, and diameter. So many of the food is wasted and can be donated, even though it's the same thing that we're eating. So the reason why food isn't donated by these, by these manufacturers is because it takes packaging, it takes transportation, and it takes money to get it there. And it's cheaper to just throw it away. So when all this food is being thrown out, it's filling our air of pollution, which is a big 
which is a big result to climate change. When, we, when the food waste ends up in the landfill, it creates methane, which is, one of, which, is a potent, which is a more potent greenhouse gas than anything. And agriculture makes up 70% of usage in the world. If you throw out one kilogram of beef, you're wasting 50,000 liters of water that was used to create that beef. And we're essentially wasting the world's water supply. And when we worry about this, we don't think, we think of oil spills and gas leaks and everything that's happening. But it's more what we're doing. And this could be a much better way to, serve, to solve the world hunger. Many of the people in the world are starving every day. And who else wants to change that in life? I know I do. Because it's something that we can all change. Now, how would you feel if no one in the world is starving? Pretty great. Because it's something I would like to change. And it's very possible. Stores are afraid that they will get sued if the food is, is, that they donate is harmful to the consumer. But I have not seen a single case of food being donated and someone getting sick from it. It has not happened. And on October 1st, in 1996, President Clinton signed for this act to be passed to help encourage grocery stores to donate the insult food. This law states you cannot be sued while donating food in Samaritan. This could take a slice out of world hunger. It could take a slice out of everything we're doing. I knew it would be very tough to donate the food since we are a school, so I couldn't use that. And we are so fortunate to eat, be able to eat three full meals a day. So when I think of people who struggle with it every day, I had to find a much better way to reduce the waste. In 2009, UC Santa Barbara removed the trays from the cafeteria, so the students felt the need to fill up the food even though they didn't eat it all. They also reduced the portion of the food, so they could come back and they tailored it, so one person would eat that one food and they could come back and get more. And so the problem is, when we go to these restaurants, we get so used to these enormous portions of food from restaurants, and it really makes us overeat and throw away a lot of food. So when we see food, we grab more than we really need to eat, because our eyes are bigger than our stomach. So, I wanted to see what the, student, what the result of students waste per meal. My data was shocking. Now, I was just wasting what the students didn't eat on their plate. I recorded the weight for each meal and added it up. We have three meals per day, like everyone else. So some days, so this is the pig bucket that we created. Some days look like this. <laughs> kind of gross. <laughs> some days look like that, also kind of gross. <laughs> and my data was crazy. The data showed me that we were wasting on average 14.75 pounds per day. And that's, and that's two teams combined. West House on an average weighs 14.5 pounds per day, while the East weighs 14.5, 14.75. We're dividing, or divided by girls and boys, it doesn't make much of a difference on what our gender is or how much we wasted. And it really showed me how it was a small school we're wasting every day. Our chef Sam, who is here today, quoted that I hate the idea of wasting food. It's a practice that I want to change for a better environment, and I most absolutely agree with him. Just being able to have food waste on a radar is one of the easiest and most effective ways to, to change. But it's a small change, it's a small change, but change is needed in this epidemic. Our chef Sam plans meals in advance for students. During the weekend, we can choose what we would like to eat, so we can have a meal that we like, so we don't waste it. But of a certain amount of students, we tend to make more than we really need to eat. And that's the reason why so much is wasted. So we have to think of better ways that we can take home from this talk in practice. Just by planning your meals, you can plan what's in your fridge already, and it's a much better idea than wasting the food. Make meals out of it, get creative. Look up, look up recipes. Make your own favorite new dinner food or your new favorite lunch. Another way is to take a picture of what's in your fridge to see what you have already. Composting is also a really fun and easy way to recycle our food. It's also a really great way to teach kids how to keep our environment clean and healthy. After the food is broken down, we can use that soil for plants. Here at the Academy at SOAR, we do have a problem with our food waste. And since my food waste pig bucket idea did help the students understand how much we were wasting, next year we will hopefully keep influencing the students to have food waste on our radar. 
Wasting food and producing more trash and producing more waste is something that is affecting the environment. We will be able to reduce our, our waste and compost it and reuse the soil from our greenhouse plants. And I'm hoping to develop a policy next year for composting on campus. Now, when you eat food, I want you to think about where it came from, how it had to be made, how it got here, how it started in the ground, and several farmers had to make sure it is growing and taking care for properly, how it had to have the correct USDA requirements, how others didn't make it, how it had to be traveled to be enjoyed today, like the food that we just ate for lunch. It connects us in the world. Think about the little things that really connect us in life. Thank you.